Masses and a Loop. A wood block of mass 4m, right over here, lies on the horizontal section of a frictionless track that continues with a circular loop of radius r. A pellet of mass m is fired with an initial velocity v0. It gets stuck in the block. The block, because it gets hit by the pellet, moves up and around the loop on the inside of it like that. So you can see here's where it's going to be when it's at the top. Express all your answers in terms of mg and r. Find the minimum velocity of the pellet that enables the block to rise to the top of the loop. That's A. B. Find the minimum velocity of the pellet that enables the block to complete the loop. And C. Find the normal force on the block when it returns to the lowest point after completing the loop. And we'll go over these in more detail when we hit each particular piece. Find the minimum velocity of the pellet that enables the block to rise to the top of the loop. So what we're looking for is this velocity right here. And by rising to the top of the loop, we mean it goes all the way up here. Then it doesn't have enough speed to get all around the loop, so it just falls down like that. Okay. So we'll start by using conservation of momentum for a perfect inelastic collision to find the velocity of the combined system of the pellet and the block. And what do we have? We have mv0 is equal to m plus 4m, that's a combined mass, and that equals vb. And vb, that's going to be our velocity of the pellet block system at the bottom of the loop. So we're not using little m, big m like we did in the previous problem, because we want to focus on b, the bottom of the loop. That's its velocity right down here. We want the minimum velocity of the pellet so that the block pellet system just gets to the top and then crumbles down. If we get there with a non-zero velocity, which means it wouldn't fall down right at the top, then the initial velocity, v0, we found is too high. We want it just to get up to the top and not continue around, okay? So we need a greater velocity to get there. So we're going to set the kinetic energy at the top of the loop to zero. That's the key point. So if we have a zero velocity at the top, our centripetal acceleration will be zero, right? Because that's v squared over r. It won't complete the loop, and it will fall to the ground. So we start with our conservation of energy. At the bottom, we have the kinetic energy of the pellet block system. At the top, we have potential energy and kinetic energy, but we just said kinetic energy is zero. So it's just equal to the potential energy. At the bottom, the mass of our system is 5m, the velocity is v bottom, and on the right, our potential energy, once again it's 5m, and we need the height. And don't get tricked by seeing this r, that's just the radius. The height is going to be the diameter, so that's 2r. What else do we know? Because we're not allowed to express our answer in terms of vb. Well, we know that vb is v0 over 5, we make that substitution, we put everybody in, and we find that our v0 is 10 times the square root of gr. Now we want the minimum velocity of the pellet that will enable the block to complete the loop. We use a slightly different logic scheme here. And first of all, we have to draw a free body diagram. So that's what we have over here. This is at the top of the loop, right there. We have mg down and the normal is down. Now our pellet minimum velocity will be greater than the velocity needed to just get the block to the top of the loop. We want it to continue around the loop. That means we need a velocity at the top of the loop. It can't be zero like the last problem. So centripetal acceleration needs a non-zero value because if you have, a pot, you have a centripetal acceleration, that means you have a centripetal force, which is keeping your object moving in a circle. This will occur when the normal force is just greater than zero, so the block won't be in free fall, but it'll have just enough to get around the loop and continue on. So we will set the normal equal to zero and find the minimum velocity at the top so the block completes the loop. So here's Newton's law using our free body diagram over here. Normal and 5mg are positive because they point towards the center, which is the direction of the acceleration. And then on the right, we have our centripetal acceleration times the 5m mass. And what do we do next? Normal is 0. 
we then do a bit of algebra and we find that v at the top has to be the square root of g r but that's not what we're looking for is it we're looking for v zero so we're not done yet now we can use the conservation of total mechanical energy to find the pellet velocity at the bottom of the loop so we're going to use this right here and notice this time we do have a kinetic energy at the top and we just found that in the previous slide so let's start at the bottom we have one half 5m v0 over 5 squared so look what we did there we already replaced v bottom with v0 over 5 at the top it's one half times 5m the mass and there's our velocity at the top the square root of gr and here's our gravitational potential energy at the top 5mg times the height which is 2r well the first thing we notice we can get rid of all the fives they will cancel out that's nice and so do the m's this will wind up being mass independent and we have this here do a little more algebraic manipulation because we have gr over 2 plus 2 gr well, that's just 5 halves gr and then we come up with this is our original velocity of the pellet right here that would be 5 times the square root of 5 gr find the normal force on the block when it returns to the lowest point after completing the loop so the block went up like this came all the way back here and right here is where we want to find the normal force we draw a free body diagram we have 5 mg pointing down the normal pointing up we express Newton's second law just like this and note the negative sign on the 5 mg as it is opposite the direction of the acceleration and now we isolate the normal force and we recognize what's v bottom equal to v bottom is v0 over 5 so we substitute in our v bottom from the previous slide which is the 5 times 5 radical 5 gr we divide it by 5 carry out the algebra and we have the normal is 30 mg